Now, former Gauteng Health MEC Brian Songwa and his co-accused are out on bail after appearing in court in connection with a multi-million rand tender fraud case. An SIU report released in 2018 found that the corrupt relationships existed between Songwa, various departmental officials and 3P Consulting, its directors and a number of companies related to 3P Consulting. According to the report, 3P Consulting helped Songwa buy property and paid for international flights for himself and others. Now joining me to expand on this matter is SIU spokesperson Kaiser Kanyako. Mr. Kanyako, very good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning. This matter is uh, perhaps a scandal that's over a decade old. Why has it taken so long to eventually get to this point? Thank you very much, Mupo, and thank you to your viewers. Obviously, uh, from our side, it did not take as long as, as it is projected. We did the investigation uh, Around, well, the, the issue was around 2006 and 2010 when, when uh, Mr. Shongo was the MEC, and, and we investigated it after that. We submitted the report to the president on, in 2017, and then it was then made public after concerted effort in 2018. Therefore, from that point onwards, it was outside of our hands. We had made the reference already at that point to the NPA, we then got the OX to do further investigation. Maybe that is the reason why it took this long. Let's now talk about the actual investigation and um, the work of the Hawks in the first leg of this probe and really leading into the second leg. Yes, we, we from, from our side, we, we were investigating this contract that was uh, done by the department to the value of about 1.2 billion rent. And while we're doing that, we came to understand that the processes that were followed to appoint this uh, company was problematic. And then we also found that there was some racketeering that was happening. We found that there were movement of monies that were done between the officials of the department and the companies that were involved. And that is why we then made that report to, to the president to say we we have found the following and this criminality that is involved because corruption and racketeering are criminal effect acts and therefore we then moved that to the NPA for them to investigate. Therefore, from that point onwards, our investigators were working together with the Hawks and the NPA to make sure that we get to the bottom of, of, of this in terms of looking at it with the eye of a criminal case, because people need to understand the difference. When it comes to the SIU, we investigate looking at it with the eye of a civil case, uh, where we deal with the issue. And then when it goes to the NPA, to be a criminal act, then they have to look at it with the eye of a criminal case which has to be proven beyond reasonable doubt. And that is why they had to make sure that all the effects are, are there and all the ducks are in a row. In the eyes of a civil case, are you confident that the information that's been gathered and put forward is indeed substantial to ensure um, you know, prison time towards the end of it all? You will never be certain about that, but we believe that we've got enough evidence that we have submitted to the Hawks. And if they thought the evidence was not enough, they would not have pursued the case going forward together with the, the NPA. Therefore, as far as we are concerned, and I know now that the matter is before the court, as far as they are concerned, there is enough evidence to present a very strong case to the, um, the judge. Uh, when the matter is, is finally being, being set uh, down, therefore we'll be able to know what the outcome is going to be. You'll never show in this matter. One of the co-accused, uh, Richard John Payne, wasn't in the country. He didn't make it to court. How much do we know about him and um, the efforts that are being made to ensure that he does return and um, you know, he, he also faces the charges? Obviously, uh, I had a... Uh, I had the, the NPA saying that they have started the processes of extradicting him. Uh, they, that is uh, within their, their purview as, as the NPA. Uh, obviously, anyone who has got a, a case to, to answer and is in a country that has got a treaty with us as, a, as South Africa to extradite people who we need to question, we're, we're, that process will start, as, as indicated, has already started. And we hope that he will come back and be able to answer for his part in this process. 
As we, we spoke about the long processes that have had to take place before getting to this point, what are some of the challenges that come with, uh, you know, the role of, of, of the Hawks as well as the relationship with the NPA and the courts in order to see prosecution occur? Because the, the whole argument and the big, um, you know, criticism comes around the time and the pace at which these big matters are eventually, you know, resulting in, in outcomes in terms of the jurisdiction of the courts. Yeah, unfortunately, I would not be in a position for to speak on their behalf and, and say this is the challenges that they are having. And like I said, I can only speak about what we have done. And we all, because we are an interested party, we, we then all, all the time get to them, discuss with them. Like I said earlier on, our investigators were working with their investigators to make sure that this matter is brought, brought to book. And, and, and at the end of it all, it is done. But I cannot speak on the challenges that they are having, if, if any. In terms of, uh, perhaps, let me, let me be more clear. I, I'm speaking and referring to the, 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 the way in which the processes unfold, because, I mean, you play a role, the NPA plays a role. It's all uh, a system that needs to be synchronized. When you look at the synchrony of the system in terms of ensuring that people are indeed charged and they do face uh, the, the might of the law, what do you believe to be the challenges and the loopholes within that system? We do not have any challenges at the moment that, that uh, uh, we, 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 we can be saying. The fact of the matter is we cannot push them to do it quicker if there are reasons for them to, to, for, for, to, to delay. Because we don't want a situation where things are going to be rushed and at the end of it all, the cases are thrown out of court purely because um, they were rushed and mistakes were done. And uh, let us appreciate the fact that at least now, Finally, the matter has now started and they have now appeared in court. We will see how they plead and the matter will be taken forward. Very well. Let's uh, leave it there for now. Thank you for your time. The SIU's uh, Keza Kanyako, they're bringing us up to speed with the matter of a former Gauteng Health MEC, Brian Klongo, and his co-accused who were granted bail uh, in this decade-old um, corruption matter resulting in, in billions of rands. And, of course, we'll have to see how it, the processes continue to unfold.